Hey everybody. Sunday afternoon and we're heading on down the street to check my minnow trap. It's been out since yesterday. I uh, apologize for all the noise if you can hear that. I can't afford to get the heat fixed in my truck. It's about $800. And so I've got a power inverter that transforms from DC to AC. And I've got a couple of little electric uh, space heaters in the truck and that's how I have to use my uh, defrost and my heat it's not a lot but it gets me by and uh, that's what all that loud noise you're hearing is so I've brought a bucket of water we're gonna do a little temperature comparison today um, I ran the water in my basement into a bucket several times and dumped it out just to get it down to groundwater temperature I have a way to bypass my um, internal water system altogether and I can pump it directly from the well right out of a hose in my basement and I did that until I got down to groundwater temperature and it was 54 degrees uh, in the bucket when we left the house I don't know if it's going to have warmed up a degree or two by the time we get to the water but it was 54 degrees when we left the house and I brought my little infrared thermometer with us so I'm going to try to get at least an average temperature of what the stream water is like so if we do bring any fish home today, we'll get a good idea of how much of a temperature shift they're going to go through over, you know, what time duration and that sort of thing. So give me a moment to get set up and I will see you out by the water. Now the way these thermometers work is the further away you get from the sensor, it doesn't become less accurate, but what it does is it gets a wider and wider area that it's checking the temperature of and then it averages out the temperature across that whole area so if you want to get a really good average of something you put it right up against it and you can see that it's about 38 degrees out here today now that's saying that water is 39 degrees but that's probably just we're probably just hitting the asphalt at the bottom because that water is definitely warmer than that All right, I'm not sure why we're still showing 39 degrees. You know what? Maybe it's just reading the uh, air temperature. So that's saying 25.7. But I don't know if we're hitting the water from this distance or not. I'm assuming we're hitting about a four foot circle of water. And it's saying it's 25.9 degrees so that's well below the freezing point and i'm not even seeing any little bits of ice around on the corners or edges or anything so i'm going to say that that's probably not very accurate so let's go ahead and just get the trap pulled up and see if there's even anything in it let's get the right end of it i grabbed the tied off end rather than the end that goes down into the water Got one little sculpin in there, it looks like, so that's better than nothing. Try to do this without getting the food stuff in there. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and just put this right on back. And there we go, one little sculpin heading back to the fish tank. See, now it's saying 49 degrees. I wonder why I'm getting such differences in temperature. See, now that seems more realistic. That's saying 38 degrees, and that's about what I would expect the water to be out here closer to the air temperature so I'm not really sure what to make of that but give me a little bit we're gonna let this guy warm up somewhat and we'll get back to the house and uh, we'll see you at the fish tank
All right, and here we are back at the tank. I kind of figured out what was going on with my thermometer, and that was that it was just picking up the outside temperature. I'm not sure why I wasn't getting readings of any of the uh, more distant objects, and I'm not really sure why I was getting that odd reading when I was looking uh, at the water in my little bucket. But when I hit the street or the guardrail, you know, that 38 degrees, that's the outside temperature. And that's what I was picking up when I was trying to get a look at the water temperature in the stream. So I still don't know what the actual water temperature in the stream was, but I'm going to go with it being really close to that. We haven't had really frigid cold weather uh, as of late. Today is actually the coldest day we've had in the last week or so. And the temperatures have been getting into the upper 40s during the day. Uh, we've even had into the low 50s on a couple of days over the last week. So I think mid 30s, upper 30s like that, 38 degrees is fair to say was the actual stream temperature. So when I got home, I started doing a little experiments with my the thermometer and with my actual temperature probe that I use for my oven. And I'm now, you know, everything was lining up just perfect. So we're getting, you know, within a degree or two we're getting the same temperature and that's fine with me. This thing gives you a rough idea. It's not meant to be super accurate. This is a little more accurate because of the fact that we've got a probe in there. So we went from roughly 38 degrees up to 62 degrees in 15 minutes. And I did that by simply adding a few cups of tap water uh, right into that bucket uh, every five minutes or so. And that brought the temperature up. So we're sitting at roughly 71, 72 degrees in this tank. And that's gonna be a jump of another 10 degrees when we go ahead and put this sculpin in there, which is what we're gonna do right now. So let me get a proper position on it. Look, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's one of those flag fish right there. So they're still in here doing well, looking good. Now, I got a lot of water to try to do this with with one hand, especially my left hand. Let me get a lot of the water out first. Here comes the sculpin. There he goes. So that is either the third or the fourth one that is now in the tank. And I don't think we're going to see any issues with it. So I'll keep you up to date. I'll let you know. Uh, if I find a dead one in the tank over the next few days, it'll be hard to tell whether it was specifically that one or not. And I would imagine if the temperature shock was going to kill it, it would have done so within the first, you know, few hours. We're going to see whether it's swimming around on the surface or lying on its side, you know, stunned, gasping for air at the surface. Oh, I thought that was a piece of branch sticking out. Can you see that other sculpin sitting right there on the, that leaf? Let's see if I can zoom in a little here. Look at him sitting up there on that leaf like that. That's pretty cool. I've never seen him do that. So I'm really enjoying these sculpins. I'm really glad I caught another one. And with the trap being still out there, I hope to catch more still. I don't think they're going to fight with each other. I'm not 100% on that, but I think they'll get along. And the way they hang out on branches and on tops of rocks and under things, I think there's plenty of room for them to spread out and get quite a few of them here in the tank and make it quite interesting little uh, things to spot as you're looking around the tank so the one we just put in there again went from about 38 degrees up to 71 degrees in 15 minutes so we'll see whether or not that gives it any kind of uh, thermal shock my guess is that it'll be just fine and that is what the definition of a cold water fish kind of is a lot of people think a cold water fish needs to be in cold water and that's not necessarily true if you take carp and goldfish for a, an obvious example they live in 80 90 degree water in the summertime all the time yet they also live at the bottom of ponds that are frozen over because they're cold water fish it doesn't mean they have to be in cold water it just means they can be in cold water and in most cases it means that they can go from one temperature to another fairly quickly without any real issue. Let's see if I can get there without getting my shadow on it. You can see the back of that one.
So there you go. That was my little adventure for the day, a little addition to the tank. I've uh, been tinkering around with other stuff so far today. I don't know what the rest of the afternoon is going to be like, so hopefully we'll be able to get back in here and do a little bit more work on my waterfall tank here. So make sure you subscribe, that way you won't miss any of it. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you real soon on the next one.